We left you in our last video talking about uh, us discovering how London was a mess. Just give that a look. So we're in our hotel. It's like small. Here is our tiny room. It's our closet. <laughs> Bathroom. And the main room. The chair. The room, it, the room is clean, but it's like the size of a closet. Maybe two closets together. And there's two plugins. If you're used to hostels, it'll be a really nice hotel for you. And they believe in fire doors. There's how many fire doors to get to our, and a lot of them you have to scan into. So there's like, just on our floor, we had to go through three doors. Yeah, stupid. It's crazy. And it's carpeted. So you're hauling your roller bags and it, traction problems. The air conditioning works. Most of the hotel rooms don't have windows. The windows don't open, so don't expect to open a window. But it is, it's a room, and it was only 174 pounds for three nights. And you could see Westminster Abbey from our hotel. It's like half a block away. So you would think that's a good location. It is a terrible location. Don't stay in this part of town because Westminster Abbey is connected to Parliament, otherwise known as Westminster Palace. And what happens at Parliament buildings? Protests. So, so far, everything around us is closed. All the streets around us are blocked and closed. You can't get a bus, you can't. Yesterday, all we got done when we first got to town is so we left our luggage and we tried to find our hop on hop off bus. We picked the original bus company. I don't think it really matters which one you pick. It sounds like they're all about the same because we wanted to do a, a river ride on the Thames. 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 Canal cruise tour. Yeah. So we did that. So we walked there, got that, went on the river cruise, which took double the time they said it was going to take. The tour guide was so funny. And these were the early London floodwarning system in London. It was said, in the river reaches, the lion's bounds. It was spill over the embankment, fill up the London underground, and London would sink. So to remember this, they said, if the lions are drinking, then London is sinking. And the last one was, if the lions' heads are ducked, uh. He was funny. It was, we were exhausted and he was entertaining. He kept us laughing and awake through the whole thing. It was really interesting. Got to see all the sights of London on that. The white round building with the timber frame and the thatched roof is the fourth rendition of Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. Arctic convoys and is known to be the first ship to fire her guns on D-Day. Now the bridge itself is made up of 11,000 tons of steel and 31 million bricks. Went up to Greenwich and then we were stuck in Greenwich waiting a half an hour for the turnaround and it was the same stories on the way back from the same guy which was less funny the second time around and we were just tired. But then it was like five o'clock we got to check into our hotel and then we went for dinner. Oh my gosh. We went to niche gluten-free restaurant. If you have to be gluten-free. It was really good. Coming from the guy that gets to eat gluten. We had bruschetta and they call them like Parmesan donuts. But what it is, is it's deep fried cheese coated, breaded and then deep fried was, you have to have those. I wish my whole meal was that. It was so good. And then my main course is I had a meat pie and the crust was so flaky and there's a little cow on it. Yeah, usually your gluten free is kind of hard and just not as good, but that was indistinguishable from a normal pastry. So it was really good. Trevor wished he had my meal. I had bangers and mash. It was still really good, really nice sausage meat. It was a great restaurant. We had our first Uber. We Ubered there. <laughs> That's been positive. We've had about four now and they've all been really good. Oh. So after dinner, we got back to our hotel and it was 11 o'clock. We got all kind of situated and we crashed. That was the end of our first day. Stay tuned and we'll talk to you about day two, which is comparative to uh, London Hill. <laughs>
it's been interesting. Uh, don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss what's coming. The best thing to do for a phone when you come to London or the UK is to order a SIM card. It's a company called Gift Gaff and I'll put the name down below and you order a SIM card which is free to do and they mail it to you. It takes about a week and you get a SIM card in the mail. Again, it doesn't cost anything. You go online when you're ready to leave, like the day of or the day before you leave and you activate your SIM card and they have really good plans. So because we're doing videos um, and we're going to be uploading and we're doing a lot of video chat with our friends and family, we chose the unlimited internet plan which was 25 pounds unlimited for the month. So you get local calling and text, unlimited internet, and it only costs two pence a minute to phone back to Canada to make international calls. So subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you in our next video.